If you're just starting a business, you may be faced with the question of whether you are working as a freelancer or as a Gewerbetreibende. And you can find out everything you need to know about the topic in this video. Hi, my name is Melchior from Contest Tax Consulting, and the first thing every founder should think about is whether he or she is self-employed as a freelancer or as a Gewerbetreibende. In Germany, all self-employed people are divided into two groups, freelancers and business owners or Gewerbetreibende. You should know which group you belong to because as a freelancer, the registration is different than that of a business owner. Freelancers apply directly to the tax office and fill out the questionnaire for tax registration, whereas business owners first have to apply to the trade office for a trade license. Also, freelancing has some bureaucratic advantages and in order to get those, you must be recognized as a freelancer. What exactly is involved and in which circumstances you are a freelancer and in which a business owner, that's what we're looking at in this video. Let's have a look at freelancers. In Germany, self-employment is regulated by paragraph 18 of the income tax law. And paragraph 18 basically distinguishes between two large groups of self-employment. The first group are the freelancers. This is defined by the nature of their profession, such as people who work in the sciences, education, or in the arts. An additional requirement is that you also have a relevant degree in this area. If you've completed a scientific degree and have received that degree and you are now doing academic work, then you're definitely a freelancer. If you are self-taught or you have changed careers into a scientific field without a degree in this area, then it may well be that the tax office does not recognize you as a freelancer. The second group of freelancers are the so-called catalog jobs. These catalog professions are freelance by the virtue of their profession and not by the nature of their work. However, these freelancers also need to have training or a degree in the area in which they work. The catalog professions are made up of jobs that have historically been self-employed, such as doctors, veterinarians, healers, physiotherapists, and so on. Then there's also the whole group of legal and business consulting professions. These include lawyers, notaries, tax consultants, auditors, but also business economists and consultants. Also included are the scientific professions and a group that is called the mediators of intellectual goods and information, which includes journalists, photo reporters, and interpreters. And then two other big professions, especially in Germany, that are very important and also very well known, which are architects and engineers. What's generally important for this list, and by the way, you can find a whole list underneath this video, is that it doesn't have to be exactly these jobs, but also jobs that are considered similar. Due to digitalization and just general internationalization in the recent decades, there are many new job descriptions that didn't exist 20 or 30 years ago. However, the law is more than 20, 30 years old and job descriptions are subject to change. This means if you practice a similar profession, then you can be recognized as a freelancer through a catalog job. To make this more concrete and maybe give an example, let's take a look at software engineers. Software engineers are not typically freelancers, they're not considered a catalog profession, but it may be that a software engineer works in a very similar way to a normal engineer and in this way can be recognized as a freelancer. For this, it is important that the training or degree is appropriate and that the project phases for a software engineer are similar to those of an actual engineer. That means you need a planning phase, you need an implementation phase, and you need a certain monitoring part of your project. If that is comparable, then a software engineer can also be recognized as a freelancer. It is important to know here that these decisions are always made on a case-by-case -case basis, and that's also the reason why an incredible number of courts deal with these issues of whether someone is a freelancer or not. What might be important for software engineers here is that in the past, things have developed towards it being less important what you do, but how you do it. So whether you develop an app or whether you build internal IT systems or you control larger IT projects, that has become less important. The way you work has actually become more important. And if it's comparable to that of an engineer, then you might be recognized as a freelancer. The second group of self-employed people in Germany alongside freelancers are the business owners, the Gewerbetreibenden. The definition for this is actually relatively simple. 
Namely, if all the things I just said about freelancers doesn't apply to you, then you are a Gewerbetreibende. So if you're not a freelancer, then you're a business owner. Simple as that. So why the heck is this actually important? Why would anyone actually care whether you are a freelancer or a business owner? The reason for this is that freelancers actually have a few advantages compared to business owners. And the first advantage is fairly obvious. Freelancers do not have to pay trade tax or Gewerbesteuer. It's only paid by Gewerbetreibende as the name actually suggests. The next point is that freelancers are never required to do proper accounting. Double entry bookkeeping is a more complex form of bookkeeping and freelancers never have to do it. Business owners do have to do this if they exceed a certain profit or turnover limit. Another advantage for some is that freelancers are not compulsory members of the IHK or the HWK. So neither Chamber of Industry and Commerce nor Chamber of Crafts are responsible for freelancers. This is the reason why many people prefer to be freelancers. However, I have often had conversations with clients or read in forums on the internet or on Facebook that many people are actually scared of being called Gewerbetreibende because they believe the disadvantages to be so huge and there I want to take some of the pressure off. The difference isn't that big because the trade tax, which only business owners have to pay, can be credited towards the income tax. To put it figuratively, where a freelancer pays 20,000 euros in income tax, a business owner pays 10,000 euros in trade tax and 10,000 euros in income tax. So the financial difference is not that big. The only real difference is the bureaucratic effort in that you need a trade license, you have to do an additional tax return and double entry bookkeeping, which is a lot more work, but you don't actually pay more taxes. And also, and this is just purely practical knowledge, I have learned in the years of my self-employment that freelance work can actually restrict you as a business. If you're a freelancer and say you have a digital business model, you'd like to change things around and be more flexible and try new things, then it can actually be worrisome for you that you might lose that freelancing status, which cannot happen as a business owner. So if you're a bit on the edge and it's more a matter of interpretation, then it might be a sensible decision to not have to worry about your freelancing status and instead have the flexibility to design and change your company as freely as you'd like as a Gewerbetreibender. I hope this short video was helpful for you and has answered your questions. If you still have questions, however, then you can find a comment section below this video where you can ask all your questions. Or also underneath this video in the video description, you can find a link where you can arrange a free consultation where we can talk in person about your questions and needs. Also, you should definitely subscribe to the channel as we regularly upload videos about tax issues regarding self-employment or you can watch this video or this video.